So today we're looking at a hotkey daemon that isn't SXHKD. This is called DXHD and it provides a lot of really neat advantages over the previous tool while also still being inspired by it which makes it much easier to convert your config over than being a completely different idea. So let's start off by looking at that config. So it's going to be located in your .config folder inside of a folder called DXHD and the file will be called DXHD.SH. Now this is just the default file. You can go and decide which file you want to use with the dash C option. So DXHD dash C and then the path or whatever config file you want to use. But there's a reason why this ends in .sh and that's because this is much closer to just being a regular script file than something like SXHKD has. And the way that you actually define which shell is going to be used to interpret the commands is through this shebang at the top rather than the way that SXHKD does it which is through an environment variable. So you could actually have say a Python binding file and a ZSH binding file and a Perl binding file and just switch between them by just passing the path into DXHD rather than having to go and modify some extra files, which I feel like is a really, really big advantage. And this is much closer to just being a regular script file. So the way that we do a comment is by starting with a double hash sign. And the reason why we do double hash is because a single hash means this line contains a key binding. So in this case, say super plus shift plus escape or super plus shift plus W. So basically you have to add a second hash to make sure those don't collide. And then anything in this block between two bindings is considered to be a part of the same command. So what this means is that unlike SXHKD where if you want to do a multi-line command, you would end the line with a backslash and then you can go down to the next line and keep writing. You don't have to do that. Everything in this block here, I guess treat it like you would with any separate script file. So you can just write an entire script in this block right here. And then when you press super plus shift plus escape, all of that block will be run and nothing else. Obviously you can get around this problem in SXHKD by putting all of that stuff into its own separate script file, but in this case, you don't have to worry about that. You can just do everything in the config, which makes it so, so much easier. As for the rest of the mappings, they work in basically the same way they work in SXHKD. So if you wanna do say, a list of values maps onto a list of values. In this case, super plus H will map to BSPC node dash F west, and then J will map to south, K will map to north, and L will map to east. You can also do ranges, so you can do zero to nine will map to zero to nine. But there was a limitation in SXHKD that really inspired the creation of this application. So in SXHKD, you can do a to Z, you can do capital A to capital Z, and you can do 0 to 9. What you can't do is you can't do 11 to 19. Now you might be wondering, why would you want to do 11 to 19? Well, let's say that we have super plus shift plus 0 to 9, and then crystal dash dash send 11 to 19. So what could be 11 to 19 here would be your desktop. So let's say you have 10 desktops on your main monitor and 10 desktops on your second monitor. The ones on your main monitor will be numbered 1 to 10 and the ones on your second monitor will be numbered 11 to 19. So there was no way in SXHKD to easily reference those desktop numbers, but in this, that problem doesn't exist and I think that's a really big improvement. Now, I got used to this by not working with 10 desktops on all of my monitors, but being able to do that here actually is going to be a really big improvement. One thing you can't do, which is kind of sad, is this right here. So in SXHKD, you would press super plus I, and then after that, you would press D, and then it would run the command. In this case, this doesn't actually work. If you do accidentally leave this in here, it won't break your config, it just won't be bound to anything. And all of my bindings are on key press event, but if you want any bindings to be on a key release event, basically you just prepend the key you want to release with an at sign. So in this case, this would be super plus zero, and then when I release the zero, it will run the command. But I feel like this is just an annoying way to work. If you want to use it though, that's your computer. I haven't run into any other problems converting config over, but I also haven't gone and checked line by line what the feature set of SXHKD is compared to DXHD. So there might be some things supported in that application that aren't supported here. But if you're working with just the basic functionality, really most of the functionality except that one thing I showed you, you should be perfectly fine. Now, one thing that DXHD does over SXHKD is this actually has mouse binding, but I've noticed that a lot of the time it's sort of questionable whether it works. Now, I don't know if that's a problem with DXHD or with my window manager eating up the mouse presses or with my windows eating up the mouse presses, but I've noticed that a lot of the time it's just sort of finicky. So 
I would also recommend always binding your mouse keys alongside a modifier because otherwise you're going to have things like pressing the right mouse button every single time is going to run some sort of command. And your right mouse button is obviously for context menus. You probably don't want to see that happen unless you just don't ever use the mouse and you just use it for some extra hotkeys. So let's go and bind control plus mouse one and let's bind it to say my terminal. And let's go back over to this window here and restart DXHD. Now, when you want to restart DXHD, you don't just have to quit the application. You can also run it with the dash R option and that will reload the config. But since we've already closed it, let's rerun the application. And if I press control and mouse click one, that opens up a new terminal. I don't generally see a reason to do the mouse binding, but I'm sure that someone probably has a really interesting use case for it. One other neat thing you can do is go and define global variables. So these will be done in whatever syntax the language your shebang is set to. So in my case, it's going to be POSIX shell script because SH is set to dash. But if you've got it set to Python, it'll be the Python syntax, Perl, so on and so forth. Okay, so I'm going to call the variable var because I'm a very creative. Now, when you define a global variable, it has to be above everything else. Because if you define a variable in any of these blocks here, it's going to be local just to that binding. So I'm going to have a variable. It's going to be called LF. And what we're going to do is I'm going to make a new binding. It's going to be on F12. And when I press F12, what I'm going to do is launch up my terminal and run whatever that variable is set to right there. So in this case, it's going to launch up LF. Let's go and restart this. And if I press F12, as you can see, it launches up LF. Let's go and set that to something else. Let's set it to say VIFM. And if we were to restart this, so I'll just do DXHD R. And if I press F12 again, now we get VIFM. So if you happen to be way too lazy to open up your config by going to it, you can also run DXHD E and that will jump you to the main config file. So DXHD.sh. But if you don't use that file as your main file, what you can do is go and run dxhd-e and then pass in the name of the file you want to use. You don't have to use the path because it's going to start the path from where the config files are located. So let's say we wanted to use something like our dxhd-py and if the file doesn't exist it's going to go and make the file. Now I want to show you a python example because when I say that each of the individual bindings is their own separate little block what I mean is they are their own separate little blocks. So if you want to say import libraries for those sections, you can go and do that. So let's say import OS and then do some things like that. Obviously, please don't use Python to do things like this. This is a bad use of Python. Use your shell to do this. But if there are legitimate reasons why you might want to import a Python library, you can go and do that in those individual blocks. On the GitHub, these languages right here are specifically mentioned as being supported. So sh, bash, ksh, zsh, python, and Perl. But presumably, if you wanted to, you could use Ruby. But most people are probably going to be using one of these languages, with most people probably using bash. And if you're on Arch Linux, this is available in the AUR, which is always a nice addition. So... I've still been using SXHKD up until this point, even after I found this application. But if you like any of these new additional features and you think this is something that I really wanted my hotkey dame to actually have because I can think of use cases for them. However, I wouldn't really be making use of most of them. I'm still kind of used to working with 10 workspaces. I might try it out and try it out with 11 to 19 on my second monitor. That's probably the one thing that could really justify me actually using this. I'm probably not going to use the mouse binding because I don't really think there's any reason to have anything bound to my mouse. Plus, this mouse is already pretty broken anyway, so I don't want to rely on it for any bindings I actually care about. So I would recommend this if you're looking for a hotkey daemon and you don't have any, but if you're already working with SXHKD, you sort of have to weigh up whether the advantages are worth it. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Corbinian, Andrew, uh, Nathan, Montazar, Chico Bento, Joseph, Peter D. Road, Tony, Brennan, John, Marek, Mikkel, Nate, Dog, Nephite, Poe, and Zilver. If you want to go on support, I've worked on the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, sell, leave, pay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and YouTube, if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. Did I say YouTube in that list of things? Whatever. Anyway, I think that's pretty much everything for me, and...